The Near Foundation just announced a $100 million VC fund and lab in partnership with Keras Ventures. So the fund is going to be allocated to seed series A investments, the first being in a venture lab, which is going to work with creators, talent, and franchise owners to build, test, and validate next generation platforms. I think this is a great extension of the last story, right? A bunch of money is being poured into the ecosystem to empower these creators and kind of figure out how we're going to operate with with the technology in this web 2.5 because let's be honest we're always talking about web 3 but web 3 is not here we're still very much in web 2 wendy tell me what you make of this story sorry my mic was muted I think that this is a good thing. I like to see people dump money into the underdogs. And we know that this product, I saw your face. I saw your face, Adam. Don't come for me this early in the morning. Okay, please. I had a very long week. <laughs> I think it's Keep a good going. thing. I like to see it. Like, hopefully that they will do good with this money. Hopefully it won't be that big. Um, I can't say the word on this show, but hopefully it won't just be a bunch of money going where, it not, where it's not supposed to go. Hopefully it'll go to people that are actually building some of the underdogs. I love to see that. Um, but then again, it is crypto VCs and I do not trust most crypto VCs as far as I can throw them. I'll give it to Adam since he's making faces at me. I am making faces, but it's not at you. It's at kind of the whole situation that we find ourselves in. You know, there's just so much money floating around these kind of worlds to be the next big thing. And everybody's trying to figure out how do you get to be the next big thing? When a lot of the sectors, again, like we saw so many of these projects come online with the idea that they were going to be the next Ethereum. And it's been really, really hard to find that. And if you look back through the history of cryptocurrencies, what you'll find is that sector leaders like notably Bitcoin, Ethereum, and really not much else. You could argue Axie Infinity but I think it's a tougher argument to make today, um, you know, that like the, the companies that become important are companies that do a thing that nobody thought was going to be important as far as the rest of crypto projects at the time that they launched it. And they stumble or, you know, were correct in getting to a use case that is important. And then once they're there, they become the incumbent and it's really, really hard to unseat them. And so I think that a lot of projects that came up with the idea that they were going to be the better, faster, more scalable version of Ethereum are now faced with the same choice that many early Bitcoin competitors were, which is that that's probably not going to happen. So the question then becomes, okay, so if that's not going to happen and we've got all of this money and time invested into it, we have all of these people who think that we're going to be the next big thing, how do we actually deliver on that value? What is the path from here to there? I think throwing a lot of money at content creators is one of the paths that people pick. And it's kind of an obvious basic path. Uh, you know, it's like, it's not, there's no grand strategy here. It's like, hey, people have, you know, intellectual property that other people care about. Hey, we should get them to use our project because then that will bring importance and that provenance to our project. And I think in practice, we just have yet to see this type of strategy actually work despite the billions of dollars that have been thrown across multiple projects towards this exact type of thing. So, uh, you know, I'm, again, like this to me is not a non-story. It's a continuation of trend. And honestly, it's a little sad because like the lack of creativity that when it comes down to it really is that it's like, you know, in crypto, so you've got like, I don't know, 1% of projects that are actually doing something interesting and then 99% of projects that are basically the, trying to be the next version of Bored Apes. And I think it's just, you know, it's, it's a tough environment because people don't understand this dynamic and it's, it's an important one. Wendy, I saw your hand go up, so why don't I throw it back to you? I think it's going to be very interesting to see exactly what happens with Ethereum once the merge is done. And maybe some of these projects that were Ethereum competitors are going to finally have their time to shine. We're being told that the merge is supposed to go and be very smooth. However, we don't know yet. That's a really, really, really big change to a massive ecosystem. So if there's bugs, if there's issues, that's when that these other blockchain projects that have been directly competing with Ethereum, hopefully that is their time to shine. And hopefully when they created these projects, especially the ones that were done in the last couple of years, they knew about the Ethereum merge, they expected it, and they kind of pre- thought about all the different bugs or the different issues that could happen. And they've built their project to kind of absorb those issues and become better. I don't know if that's going to happen or not. I hope it does, but I have a feeling maybe one or two crypto projects can actually directly compete with Ethereum. Interesting. Three, I want to jump in here. <clears throat> okay. Oh, three way, oh, well. three way. I get to jump in because you guys both already talked already on this subject. So it's my turn. <laughs> DeFi. Rude is something well it's true also jen <laughs> near foundation raised like 450 million dollars over this year 
for DeFi specifically. Like the Near Foundation is really good at raising money. So don't really think they're underdogs. I think they're actually like, they're rolling in the money, right? And to add them to your point, like, what are they going to do with this? I mean, if they were just so focused on DeFi for quite a while, raise money from a bunch of different teams, including Three Arrows Capital at one point, and now they're just pivoting into this other content creation aspect. You know, I don't think that's actually odd. If you do look at the landscape for L1s right now, it's really hard to beat Ethereum. It's really hard to beat Bitcoin. Like those are dominant. They're not moving. The only thing you can really pivot into is maybe offering something else that Ethereum is not very good at. And that might be some sort of content creation angle where Ethereum's too expensive to use it. So we'll build content creation on top of something like Near. Who knows? You have to find that out, right? And that's why they raise these huge rounds so they can more or not throw like money at the problem and figure out what happens. But Jen, I'll give it to you now. Apologies for being rude. That's okay. Still love you. So one of the executives mentioned in the story said that they're really focused on, you know, bringing engagement to consumers and fans. And there's so much money being poured into the space. We talk about it all the time. A lot of the stories we're talking about today are about consumer and fan engagement. And I've noticed a lot of the startups in this space talk so much about this consumer and fan engagement, but they don't actually go out there and ask consumers and fans what they want. And so I think if you're building something for artists, for creators, you really want to create this engaged community ask the community what they want there are so many projects building just based on trends and what they think and i think if you go out there and ask you'll find that a lot of the people that these projects are being built for still have no idea what's going on they're still very skeptical and that needs to be addressed before a lot of these projects can see the kind of success that we want adam yeah, I'll, I'll just add that, um, you know, there's a tendency to look at people who are in high, high place positions, not unlike ourselves on this show, by the way, I'll mention, uh, and assume that they have some type of insight that is fundamentally better than other people and that they have some type of knowledge that will lead them to make decisions that are better. And I used to believe that. And then I paid attention to crypto for 10 years really, really closely. And what I discovered over and over again is that Everybody's just people. They're all just people. Nobody knows what's <laughs> going to happen. Nobody knows what's going on, right? Like, and as a result of that, again, like this, this idea that, that there can be, you know, that, that there's some, you know, that there's some like amazing plan at work here behind many of these projects. It's just not true. You know, as, as uh, you said, Jen, you know, like this is trend following more than anything else. And because, and like, by the time something becomes a trend, that's the point at which the opportunity to take advantage of that trend from a business sense is typically already gone. So again, like we're, we're getting, you know, these signals from the market, you know, six months, a year after, because people who are building stuff that doesn't make sense at the time, but then takes off, that's kind of where really all of the intelligence is. And that's why it's so good that there are so many projects out there, even with this dynamic, which is somewhat irritating, is that we don't know what's going to happen. And so the game really is for people people to make their best guess. And then the projects that are the most right and kind of the bravest about doing it, they're the ones that tend to win. But it's a lot of losers for every winner out there. So again, it's something worth being careful about. Wendy, I think we're almost done, but I'll throw to you for a last word. As a um, content cringe influencer over here, um, content creation is very, very important. But at the same time, I always tell my audience, hear what I say, but listen to yourselves. Listen to my, or hear my opinion, but make an opinion based on your own choices, what works for you. And I think it's important to do that. And I'm done. <laughs>